Good evening. It's a bit cold and chilly out there, isn't it, guys and girls? So wrap up warm, turn the heating up and get yourself a nice big cup of tea like that. And don't forget <laughs> to drop a like on the stream, subscribe to the channel, consider sharing it on your social media platforms. Duke, what are they doing with that bell, my friend? Um, um, they can smash Alexa around with the bell. Just so <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was... Um... She was she was giving me a bit of stick. Yes, yes. It was. Uh, I was having a row with her, wasn't I? I was calling her some rude words. Oh, it was amazing. I think the hey, highlight. Pete, of hope all, you well, mate. Hi, Pete. I think the highlight of it all, mate, was when you turned around and said, "I think she's possessed by the spirit of a Spurs fan." Yeah, that was me, yeah. Fun. It's I'm been re like reprogrammed by the wife. What can you do? How are you, my friend? A little bit better than I was earlier, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad you said putting this off until today because I wasn't in the best of moods last night. No, I, um, I noticed. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say more as we go on, mate. But it wasn't. Yeah. Um, it really wasn't good enough. And, and listen, you, I don't know whether you've seen my um, match day vlog. And you know that I'm usually that someone with a really like... poor footage, a really poor video, really poor. That's yeah. the one. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've I, I ejected that clown. Don't worry about that. I <laughs> I I I took great delight in hitting the block button with that. Oh, twat. that's amazing. But anyway, pardon my language, but you know, he just wound me up. Um, yeah, I uh, I you know me. I like to try and be someone that tries to be positive. I know it's difficult in this in this world that we live in to to try and be positive, but I you know me I like to try and find a positive even out of a negative in in some respects and sort of you know glass half full rather than glass half empty you know that sort of mentality. I found it quite difficult yesterday. I'll be honest with you, Duke, because there wasn't anything to be um, you know glass half full about, mate. To be fair. Well well, um, I, no, I, no, I managed no, to find no. a no, I no, no, I did manage You're to find not a couple convince of me. What, Declan Rice's performance, um, Manuel Lanzini's cameo. Listen, they they were they were good points of an overall shit show. Mm. Oh yeah, um, no, I, I, just because just because every listen, they only stood out because of how bad everything else was. I yeah. don't think they particularly had a an amazing game each or an amazing fifteen minutes for Lanzini. They only stood out because of the shit show that was in front of them, um, or, or you know what happened. So, you no, know, I thought Declan you know, was was outstanding again, and I think Manuel again Lanzini only because was... he stood out against the the shat that, that came prior, really. No, and I, that, and I that, think that's a little is... unfair. Yeah, but that's their opinion. Yeah, yeah, you know, I get that, I get that. But, um... Yeah, okay, let's uh, let's get to it. Um, here we go. Right, so that was that was the team that took to the pitch. The, the, the surprise for me, I, I was, and we've mentioned him already, really disappointed that Manuel Lanzini wasn't in the starting 11. Um, how about yourself? Listen, those front four yesterday, and, and I'll include Bowen because I do believe he had his shooting pitch on the wrong feet. I thought they were poor. Um, I thought that the, 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 front, the front four, as it were, were some of the worst performances that I've seen in the West Ham shirt in a very, very long time. Um, I I was actually on the TV. I actually watched on TV. Um, Gacy, you, I know you went. Um, yep. I, I, I've got to say, all in all, um, you know, Rice only stood out because of how poor everyone else was in the West Ham side. Don't get me wrong. He had a good game. But I just felt that everything around him was poor for him to stand out. If he has that kind of game in a game where everyone else is playing fantastically, we're going to be discussing just how poor Declan Rice was in a game where everyone else performs to the top of their ability. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's difficult. I, I, I am still reeling. I am still majorly annoyed, pissed off. Call it how you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, mean, I, listen, I, I sent you a message last night, Rob, where um, I said that we were 
30% possession at home against a team like Brighton. Yep. Not good enough. I'm sorry, not oh, don't, good enough. And I know, don't disagree. I know what you say about your stats, um, and I know you love your stats. And as long as we can back it up with with everything else we do, but we, you know, if we won one nil with seventy percent, you know, conceding seventy percent possession, then so be it. You say the job's done. But we were at home against Brighton and Hove Albion um, in a game where we can consolidate fourth place for more mm. than you know for the rest of the until Saturday at least, yeah. and we kind of just. We, we bent over backwards and allowed them. Um, you know, I, I, you know I, I felt sorry for... Um, is, is, is it Saramiento? Saramiento, yeah, because that was his full debut. Yeah, and, I, and, and, and to be fair, in the first 13 minutes, they showed flashes of him being an incredibly good player. He, he, he looked really Chelsea? good. Have I got that sorry? right? Was he, was he at Chelsea? Did he go in from Chelsea? I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, what was that from Peter there at the bottom? Uh, hang on, not just seen it. Uh... Again, I thought he was caught out of position a few times. I don't think okay. he was supported by um, by four nails that was in front of him. So it allowed the likes of, you know, um, you know, uh, who came on? Uh, Solly Marks, wasn't it? Yeah. Came on for, for Sammy. And I, I think that they, him, you know, they got... They got doubled up on both sides of the pitch. I felt this two foul and Johnson at points were doubled up on that side of the pitch with no support. And okay. I'm not saying that, you know, that they couldn't do much about it. And I, I just got really frustrated, Rob. Really, really frustrated that we're at home. We are in fourth, looking yeah. to consolidate fourth for at least another few days, which if we'd won... We would have done so. I, I'm, I'm unaware of what the scores are at the moment with the regards to the game. Uh, um, I know Tottenham are one nil up because obviously my <laughs> missus has got it on. And then you've got Manchester United versus Arsenal, haven't you? So yeah, that's, um, and, and that's the game that can yet, screw us think. up and, and allows and allows um, allows Spurs to get a little bit closer to us. You know, whereas mm. if we'd won the game, we would have consolidated. So I'm, I'm very frustrated and very annoyed and very mm. angry that. Once again, you've got a couple of players out there, three players at least out there last night hmm. that threw up two out of tens, maybe three out of tens in my opinion. Wow. In, in Benny, Fornells and Antonio that won't get dropped this weekend against Chelsea. I thought... Um, because we can't afford to. I thought Fornells was okay. Nothing exceptional. Probably a six out of ten in my book. I thought he was... He, was, he worked hard. Benny... Um, yeah, I, I I got to agree with you. I'm sa- I'm sorry to say, and we'll we'll cover that shortly. But Benny was. It's for their own Pete. Oh, that's, that's, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I respect your opinion, mate. And that's fine. Yeah. Um. Benny. Benny was poor. Poor. I mean, he just seemed to be giving the ball away for fun. Um. I'll 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 go into that a little bit more in depth later on. Antonio, I don't think was much better, but I think he was better than Benny was. Um. And in my opinion, I struggle to make a case for Saeed Ben Rama starting the next game. And I am a Saeed Ben Rama fan, but I have to call it as I see it. I think that Manuel Lanzini, in fact, I don't think I can, I can back it up with, with the stats. Um, that in the 15 minutes that Manuel Lanzini was on the pitch, he did more in that 15 minutes than Saeed Ben Rama did in 75. And that's a fact. Yeah, well, it is. We, we discussed it earlier, mate. Um, I mean, Ken's there, and you know, I kind of bow down to Ken's knowledge on this shit. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I do disagree with the whole Arthur situation. Again, I just feel that we we had to change shape in a way to accommodate. I don't Arthur think he looked on. all that when he came on. To be he, honest, he I was quite disappointed with didn't. Arthur Vasilaku. Um, and again, he's another he's another player that that shouldn't be. Shouldn't be anywhere near the bloody starting eleven of a of a side that's competing for top four foot, you know, top four in Premier League. Um, it was just again, mate, it's so frustrating. I think they pointed out after I think it was thirty eight minutes. Yeah, I think it was thirty eight minutes on 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 Amazon. They pointed out that West Ham had forty eight passes, forty eight completed passes, 
to Brighton's 125. So let me get that straight. So th- up to the 38th minute, I think it was we something made, like 38 we minutes. We completed 48 passes. 48 so passes. we hadn't even completed one, or, or we completed one point whatever passes per yeah. minute. That's ridiculous. I think it was something. It was something like 38 minutes. Yeah. And then don't get me wrong. I think we kept possession for about three minutes, which then probably yeah. bumped that up to being whatever. But at that point, it was completed passes, and I believe we had 48, yeah. and uh, Brighton had 125. Oh um, look, he's turned up. Line. Well, he owes us. He owes us all the t-shirt at least. He does, doesn't he? We got yeah, a point. And clean houses and clean cars. And cars. I mean, I don't yeah. drive. I'm sure yeah. my missus will be quite happy though. Yeah, my, my car's a right state. I could do with it being um <laughs> being sorted out. I I you, do you know what? Um I you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out here to Iron Man, because obviously he made the proclamation that we were gonna lose all three, and we said that we weren't, and obviously we drew yesterday, so that means we didn't lose all three of the games, did we, Duke? That's how it works. That's um, how it works. 50 quid donation to Wyler Iron Man, and we'll say no more about it. <laughs> uh, and you can send us the screenshot to at Fulsh Talk on Twitter. Uh, and and, th- and that will be the end of the matter. Over to you. Okay. So um what was um what was your thoughts on on the incident in because I think the big talking point, Duke, was the incident that occurred on minute 49 in the second half. Where we scored a goal to to to, to make it two 0 at that point. Now whether we deserved it or not is another matter. But we scored a goal, and I'm in the ground, and obviously you got the weight, and it comes up, and it says that they're looking at a foul. Um, I saw the foul quotes unquote in on the on the screen very very briefly, <clears throat> very fleetingly. And my initial impression was that it was a foul. I've got to be honest. So I was convinced it was going to get chalked off. But it then moved on. Obviously, they they didn't say that they'd, you know, that they'd obviously it was or it wasn't. But they then moved on to the offside. So I'm thinking, well, hang on a minute. If they've moved on to now looking at offside, this is me in the ground looking at it sort of like unfolding on the screen. If they're looking at offside now, then surely the foul isn't a foul. Hence why they've now moved on to, was it onside or was it offside? Now, a lot of people seem to be a little bit confused as to the offside law and all the rest of it. Um, And I've watched it back. I've watched it back and I've watched it back from several different angles. And I have read and I have reread Law 11 of the International Football Association Board's laws of the game. Um, that goal was ruled out correctly. Your thoughts? Yeah. No, I listen, completely agree with you. I've seen so much shit all over Facebook in the last um, in the last 24 hours. Um, yeah. I wish it wasn't so, Duke. Let me let me make that abundantly clear. For anyone it, watching, it's like, it how right. can you say that? It, it by the letter of the law, and I don't like it. It touches, it it touches is... Antonio. It does touch Antonio, yep. and I will argue the toss with anyone for for days on this one. Okay, we might not um, beat Chelsea, but we didn't. We didn't lose, didn't lose to Brighton. To Brighton, so and that's it, what you it, said, it Iron Man. So it carry on. Down, Give the donation to. To Isla, and we'll speak no more about it. Move on. Um, yeah, the it, it touches Antonio. The the, the the bin on the ball changes. Okay, so they weren't. Everyone's banging on about. Oh, they're just trying to find a way to have it disallowed. It weren't offside. He weren't offside. He weren't offside. Listen, yeah, he was. There was one person either level or just behind him in front of independent. On what way you want to look? Yeah. Um, which was I think Trossard at the far side of the pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has to be two. Has there to be has two. To be Normally, one's that. the goalkeeper, but it doesn't explicitly yeah. say on Law Eleven that it has one has to be the goalkeeper. Well, we had this it's issue a few weeks two ago players between the the offensive player and the goal. If there you was will, an issue in a playing. live game. There was an issue in a live game um, before I took my leave of absence. Mm-hmm. Shall we yep. say? Um, there was a live game on, I think, either the Saturday or the Sunday that was disallowed for roughly the same sort of thing was the fact that 
there was only one because the keeper was so far forward and it was the defender on the line or further back, it was disallowed correctly. Mm. And the same way that this one was. Now I've seen seen a few um seen a few comments on, on social media, Facebook groups, um yep. Friends of the channel. I, I, think I, you a, know. I think it's a lot of people that fundamentally don't know no, 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 the offside no, no. law of them, as well as you and I do. No, one of them. One of them has his own his own um, podcast. Um, uh, you know, friends doesn't, of the channel doesn't mean he knows okay. the offside law. No, I think he knows his football. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to say that he doesn't know the offside law. But ah, he no. was might know football, but you don't might not know the lot. laws of the game. Bleating quite a lot about how it was. Um, how it was an offside, except except for now, um, it, it was, and it was rightfully um, it was rightfully disallowed for the offside. Now, what pisses me off is it wasn't an obvious error by the referee. What wasn't? They initi- the offside it wasn't an ob- glaring obvious error, which is what they're there for, Rob. No. Okay. No, I'm I'm, I'm going. Gone look- I'm going they've initially to- gone looking for the free kick. Which yeah, but clear Lallana, on- yeah. Lalana is not looking at the flight of the ball. In mm. fact, he has his back to the flight of the ball, looking at Dawson coming in. Dawson doesn't check his run. Dawson's looking at the ball and he bundles into Lalana who falls over like a sack of shit in the big girls' mm. players. He is, goes down like a wet paper, wet paper bag. And that's what they were looking for. Did the referee miss that free kick? Was that a clear and obvious error? No. No, free kick. they decided that. Yeah, for the free kick against Dawson on Lalana as he's running in. Barrels it right. in, sends Lalana flying, but because Lalana was not looking at the ball, mm. okay, because Lalana is looking at his man. Yep. It's not a free kick. Lalana is not, he's intentionally trying yep. to block and impede the run. Therefore, if anything, it's a penalty at West Ham if you want to play silly bollocks because he impeded the man's run. No different than holding his shirt and stopping right. him from getting away, okay? Now, what they've done then is they've gone, hang on a minute, we need to check. Now, yeah, Mark, you're right. They are checked briefly, but that took two or three minutes. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't get it right. What I'm saying is they got it right. It was offside. Right. But but it wasn't a clear and obvious error, like a glaring error by the referee, which is what the can I is for. Can I just interject at this point? And I'll tell Please you the reason up. why is because it doesn't need to be a clear and obvious error. The clear and obvious error criteria is deemed irrelevant when it comes to serious missed incidents. And those incidents are goals, which obviously that was a goal, a goal they were looking at. Uh, penalty decisions, direct red card incidents and mistaken identity. So the clear and obvious error criteria in this situation doesn't apply. Well, then can you tell me why it was disallowed for offside when they initially weren't looking for it? Because they've got to check they all were goals. Quite happy to, but they were quite happy to let that goal stand, but it was only because they were looking for the free kick. Then they couldn't find the first free kick. Then but, they couldn't but all find goals the are checked. Kick, all goals are checked anyway. Listen, I'm not saying they didn't get it right. I'm not saying they didn't get it right. The, the correct ruling was made. Mm. But initially they were looking for two free kicks before they then found the third reason to try and disallow that goal. And there are people out there shouting conspiracy. Listen, the correct decision was made. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that's really the the bottom line, isn't it? You know, if if the correct decision was made, and and like I say, I think a lot of people's confusion is because they don't, and and I'm and I've actually got Law Eleven. I'm looking at it on the International Football Association Board website. The the bit that because people were saying that well, it came off of Duffy before it obviously br- brushed Antonio. But it was still and, heading in his direction whilst he was off the side. And the thing was, there's relevant. no way, though, that Duffy played that ball deliberately. And this is a passage here. <laughs> it says, a player <laughs> in was. an offside position <laughs> receiving the ball from an opponent who deliberately plays the ball. Now, I'm just going to stop there because straight away, it's like, well, 
Duffy didn't play that ball deliberately. So, I don't it like it. Play this and say, no, listen, that's what I was going to say. I'm not happy about it. It was disallowed. But, I mean, let's be honest, in the grand scheme of things, exactly that offside that goal, yeah, exactly. Uh, that offside goal don't mean Jack's getting in the grand scheme mm. of things. We were piss poor. We didn't deserve to, to Anything. get... If I'm, if I'm honest with you, mate, and they showed one of these graphics at one point in the uh, in the start of the second half, maybe, or towards the end of the first half, mm -hmm. and it showed the goalkeeper. It showed the number four, which I think is... That was uh, Webster, it, wasn't it? it? No, our number four. Oh, that's Zuma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zuma was on the D of our box for the most part. Right. Okay? And then... Every other player, the rest of the nine, were practically in a straight line on the halfway line. None of the strikers <laughs> weren't even in their half, mate. Wow. It shows you the average position up until that point. And all nine of our players were literally down the line in the halfway line with Zuma on the D and the goalkeeper in goal. It was it was shocking to look at. Yeah. Whereas they they had like four people in our half, five yeah. people in our half. Two on the halfway line, three, and then the keeper. And you're just looking at it going, how? We're, we're the home <laughs> side, right? We're the yeah. home side. That should yeah. be completely reversed. Was there, is, do you believe that it was the players? Do you believe it was the manager? Where well, do you listen, think the responsibility? Listen, I've, I've said this over and over again, right? Of, of um, uh, managerial sackings, etc. Um, for me, yep, it's got to be a to a degree sixty forty in the players' favour of why a manager gets that. A manager can only set them up in the way that he sees fit. He can only motivate them so far. If they don't go out there and do the job, it's their fucking fault. Yep, and, there's, and the, the manager can only do so much. Once they players never get sacked, though, do they? No, and that's <laughs> the point. You know, so no, I don't think. Listen, Moyes said, look, listen, Moyes has worked wonders with this side, regardless. Yeah. And they're exactly the same players that started every other game three games ago. Yeah. Yeah. The players haven't changed. Their fucking mentality has. Pardon my French. I'm very aware that you've got to try and watch that there. Um, it's the players' attitude. And it's the. It's the front four attitude mm. for me. It's not the back six, seven including the keeper. It's the front four's attitude in the way they're approaching the game. Ben Rama, um, I've got to say, one of the worst performances I've seen, say, Ben Rama put in, in a West Ham shirt. And you'll corroborate that in a minute. So those in the chat, I'll draw a second. But that was one of the worst performances I've seen from Ben Rama. Attitude-wise, um, uh, uh, desire wise, you know, Antonio again, dosh, absolute shocking for me, mm. Antonio, yesterday. Mm. Awful, <clears throat> awful. Um, and the fact that we can't drop him because there is no one else right now is really beginning to irritate the granny at me. I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm getting really annoyed with it. I'm not getting really annoyed with having the same conversation. I, I turned around and said he should have been dropped in the canal and drowned last night. <laughs> oh, we he's don't. Lion when he played for Jamaica, and he was a cat sitting on its tail with its tail wagging between his fucking legs, like, what's this? What's this going on? That's what he's like for West Ham. Pussy cat for West Ham yeah. at the minute, and it's 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 winding me up, mate. It really is. He needs to be taken out, and someone needs to give him a good beating and remind him why he puts that shirt on on a regular basis. Before we go on to. The, the Saeed Ben Rama and, and the stats that I've got on him for, for last night, um, which people may have or may not know about, but I'm sort of going to get it out there. Um, how much, two, two questions, how much of a loss three games now without Angelo Ogbonna? Do you believe this is now showing how much, how important Angelo Ogbonna is to David Moyes' setup? That's the first question. And the second question, and and this is a this is a question that you've heard before, and you may hear again. Did last night highlight that we need Jesse Lingard? 
Hi, Simon. Okay. First things first. First, I'm going to, I'm going to cover three things here quickly. First one, Ken's comment. He's spot on. Brighton are not getting the They are. Um, they're a very they did good a number on us. Great football. And if they had a striker that wasn't Neil Mopay, um, and I big Mopay out before the game in our, in our chat, and I likened him to an Antonio type character. Um, if they had someone who could put the ball in the back of the net, Kent's right, they would be a top six side. There's no two ways about it. They played really well yesterday. It was a good goal, goal, goal he got, though. Um, don't get me started. <laughs> Arthur standing there in watching. Right. First question. And Dawson. I don't think it's of Bonner as a player. I think it's a left-footed centre-back. Agreed. Okay, if we had a left footed centre back to go in there, I don't think anything changes and we can still build up from the left, etc. 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 So sadly I don't think it's just a bonner. I think it's having a left footed centre back in there to you know, at the moment you've got three centre backs, you prefer playing the right side. Yeah. You know, someone someone commented uh, on the on the palace uh, no on the Man City game the other day. And they said that um, Laporte, if if Laporte had, um, if he wasn't left footed, he'd be bagging groceries or working for McDonald's. Um, Fair enough. How you doing, Kieran? Hope you're well. Uh, Kieran, just um, yeah. I mean, listen, he's he's a great player to cover your other one, and as much as it pains me, and as I've said to you already. It looks like it's going to happen, okay? It, it doesn't matter whether I feel it should or whether it's, I feel it shouldn't. It yep. looks like it's going to. Now, that being said, we need him. There is no two ways about it right now. Mm. We I think need, he needs us, doesn't he? Um, I think we need him more than he needs us right now, if I'm honest with you. I mean, he could still sit on the bench and earn his money at United, couldn't he? I mean, he came off the, other day, came off the bench the other day. Um yeah, no, we we do need him. We need him as that other option because if he was in the side, Antonio's got a foot up the arse because he can play that lone row up front yep. as well. He has the pace to get in behind. He can play. He can also play off of Antonio, which gives Antonio something else for when the likes of Ben Rama and Bowen and Fornells are misfiring. You know, but you can only drop one of them three. You can mm. only drop one because you've only got Lanzini to walk into that position. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Lanzini and I mentioned him earlier in that he had a 15 minute cameo. Now, this seems like an opportune moment to do it, Duke. Um, I've got some stats here from last night's match. I'd like to make a, a comparison, if I may, if you if you will indulge me. I shall indulge. Sir. OK, so. In my opinion, Saeed Benrahma had a bad match last night. Doesn't make him a bad player. I'm not saying we should bomb him out of the, the the squad. I'm not saying we should sell him. I'm not saying any of that. So let me just make that abundantly clear. I am a Saeed Ben Rama fan. However, that being said, I have to call it as I see it. Last night, he was abject. No other word for it. Abject. Um, last night, he had one shot, which was not on target. Uh, his passing accuracy in 75 minutes he was on the pitch was 54.2%. Now, in that in that time, in that 75-minute spell that he had on the pitch, he made 24 passes to get 54.2% of a passing accuracy. So basically what he's saying is he, he made... He probably yeah, made 13 probably passes. 13 passes in yeah. 75 minutes. Yeah. There are thereabouts. Now, Manuel Lanzini, 15-minute cameo. He had 18 passes. Now, straight away, you're thinking, well, hang on a minute. So in, in what, a third of the time, a quarter of the time that Saeed Benrahma had, he only had six less passes in that time. His passing accuracy was 94.4%. Furthermore, just for a little bit more... Um, ammunition. Saeed Ben Rahman played two crosses. Manuel Lanzini played three. 75 minutes for one, 15 minutes for the other. Now, 
with respect to Saeed Ben Rama, I don't understand if he if Saeed Ben Rama starts the next game ahead of Manuel Lanzini. I don't understand what David Moyes is watching. And I know, listen, David Moyes is, is a seasoned Premier League manager and we're just a couple of mid-40s West Ham fans that chat shit on a YouTube channel. I get that. But I don't understand, looking at those stats, how it could possibly be justified for the next game to come around against a team like Chelsea. And you look at the stats that Manuel Lanzini has in terms of ball retention and how you can you can possibly make a case for keeping Ben Rama in the side at the expense of Lanzini. I just don't... I, what, what about you? Um, if Lanzini doesn't start, I'm going to be asking questions as to what Lanzini's doing with, um, with uh, regards to what... Um, Victor Moses allegedly did. Hmm. Because he can't keep having the performances he's having off the bench or, you know, in Europe, etc. Um, for it to be for him to be ignored consistently, Rob. He's hmm. an outstanding player. We've said it over and over again on this channel. His full retention is amazing. And again, yesterday, he came on the pitch, he kept ball. You know, we 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 kept possession, and he battled for the, the ball field. as well. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't just he he was battling, he was hassling, he was harrying his opponents. Well, you saw that an awful lot more intensity than I saw from Ben Rama. Yeah, well, you you saw that he that that's where his goal came from on Saturday, mate. Sunday, sorry, was hmm. the fact that he he hurried and he harassed. He got yep. the goal because he wanted to get there. So. You know, again, really, I don't get it. I don't mm. understand. He should start. And listen, you can pick one of either Ben Rama or Fall Nails to drop out. Huh? You know, but the be all and end all, Rob, is between you, me, and the gatepost and the rest of the boys in the chat. After five minutes, we were one nil up. Mm. We should have gone for the juggler. Yep. We we should have gone in, and we should have put them to bed before half time. And we didn't. We allowed them to play the football that we should have been playing. To be perfectly honest with you, they should have shut up shop yeah. for at least the, the next twenty-five minutes to um, to stop us from getting a second. They should have been the ones that um, played a little bit of defensive football. Um, and, you know, stat deep to stop us from doing anything else. That's what they should have been doing. Mm. Especially we given that we've that. got aspirations of European football. And there it is. We did that. We sat deep. We, we played defensive football. We mm. parked the bus. And it was shocking to see. Now, I don't know whether that is a moist thing. Yep. Or whether that's the players on the pitch taking lead and going like, fuck that. And sitting deeper because I could see Moyes on the, on the like from where I was obviously watching the game on telly from yep. where I was in my house. Um, you could see him in the technical area trying to get the players further up the pitch, i.e. the nine on the halfway line. I can get up a little bit further. Why are you yeah. sitting so bloody? The, why, why is your centre forward in line with your two central defensive midfielders on the halfway line? Yeah. Why are your three attacking midfielders in a straight line? Um, that this should be the case, mate. Um, and, I, I, and it's the players that are taking it upon themselves mm. to sit deeper. Parking the bus. Awful. We yeah, have no outlet. Surely we've... Declan Rice as, as the captain, surely he would be going, lads, we're far too deep here. We need to get another 10 y yards or so right, further up He was up on the, the halfway line, in line with the rest of the other eight players in that position. I have no doubt he was trying to piss them forward and get Antonio up on the edge of their bloody box where he's meant to be playing. Whether or not they're doing that, which is because by that point, Brighton are already on our halfway line 
turning yeah. up against the nine, then what do you do? Like, I don't, mate, it just annoyed me. It, it frustrated me. Um, oh, mate, you and me uh, both, Kent. You and me both. I, I watched. I watched him. I watched him. Um, who was he, who was he marking? Dawson and Stuchek. Were he from a couple of corners? He's, he's, yeah. he's, mate, I, I do believe he's out in my front room at the moment, or in my kitchen at the moment, um, Lamptey, um, in between two slices of bread in an elf's hat. <laughs> so, such is his height. He's one of my Christmas elves, I'm sure of it. Um, he, he had an impact. Kent's absolutely right. Oh, he's no, he, he was superb when he came off the... Brilliant. We looked scared when he came off the bench, mate, and it frustrated me because... No disrespect. They didn't show the likes of Ben Rama, Antonio, or Bowen that kind of respect of being scared about them. But then we also gave them nothing to be scared about. Mm. Yeah. Um, something that has to change for Saturday, a mentality change from the four boys up front. Now, whether that means Lanzini walks in... Um, whether that means that we put Suchek up front, drop Antonio and bring Noble in, I don't know. I, the you play Suchek as the false nine. Mate, I ain't got a clue what I'd do right now. Anything to yeah. get Antonio out of that starting 11 to make him realise he ain't undroppable. Needs to kick up the arse. And, and, and the thing was, I there was there was something I saw on Facebook a little earlier and I hope he'll... Give me Parkins and I'll go flex up front Saturday. Yeah, fair enough. But no, I, I saw a... A post on Facebook, um, Stelios from West Ham Network um, put something out there, and and I haven't had an opportunity to see his um, his his stream on it, but it was uh, you know the prop. What are we going to do about Antonio? And I just made the point, and I oh, and I'll be honest, I'll, I'll <laughs> no, um, I'll be honest, and I said to to Stel afterwards, I said I haven't had a chance to see your video yet, but I will later. Um, but things just keep getting in the way. But it, this is my opinion, right? Now, every other team, every other player that's in that starting eleven, outside of Mikel Antonio knows that if they put in a couple of crap performances, their, their slot is up for grabs. So if Fabianski has a crap game or two, Ariola replaces him. If Kufau has a crap yeah. game or two, Johnson or um, Fredericks replaces him. If Cresswell has a couple of crap games, again, Johnson can, can replace him. Yeah. Um, Dawson, he has a couple of crap games. Diop can replace him. Um, or Diop could replace Zuma if his levels drop. Um, I don't think it's it's realistic to say that, that Declan Rice's levels would drop, but let's just suppose they did. Well, Crow could replace him. Noble could replace say. him. You know, yeah, whatever. Forward. So everybody yeah. else is, is fighting you know, to a greater or lesser degree for their place the following week except for one yep. player, Mikel Antonio. And I, again, I love Mikel Antonio. He's, he's been at the club, what, six years now? He's our yep. record Premier League goal scorer. I have the utmost respect for him. He's played in so many different positions. He's now playing as the nine. He has played at right back. He's played at ring, wing back. He's played here, there and everywhere. So I'm not someone that's got an axe to grind against Mikel Antonio. But right now, and for whatever reason, whether it's... The international break has taken something out of him, whether he's carrying an injury, whether his mind's not right, whatever the reasons behind it, fundamentally, his performance levels have dropped and they're Massive not at an acceptable level for a Premier League number nine and this Premier League club that is in European competition this season and has aspirations of possibly, possibly getting into a top four slot because I do honestly believe that fourth place is up for grabs this season. Now, I don't think that it's a healthy dynamic for every other player to know that their place is up for grabs, but know that his place isn't up for grabs because they're going to be sitting there and going, what's this all about? We're not all playing by the same rules here. You know how it works, Duke. If you're at a place of work and you can see that there's someone that's getting preferential treatment, someone that's getting a little bit of the softly, softly approach, whereas you and all your mates are getting the sort of like, get on with your job and think yourself lucky that you've got one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're yeah. going to look at that individual and go, hang on a minute. What's this all about? 
Well, we've discussed this, Rob, haven't we, numerous times, yourself and me, you know, discussed the whole situation with um, with Antonio, because I, I do feel like someone's taking the piss, if I'm honest. I do feel like the, the players out there are having the, the, the proverbial, uh, the proverbial taken out of them. Sorry, drop the camera. Now, if we're not gonna, if we're, if we're not gonna deal with that over the course of the next, you know, 12, 13 games, can't do that. If we're not gonna deal with that over the next um, 12 or 13 games, over the next, you know, I think it's eight games. Is it eight games that we've got over the course of December? Uh, I can just find out for you. I think um, it's eight games through December because we've got. got the are you including Rubber. the Europa League? Yeah, Deb Rubber and the and the okay. uh, League Cup. One, I think we've got two, six. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine matches in the month of December in all competitions. Good. So okay, so we've got nine matches net between now and uh, the the window opening. Okay, and. That's no, it's, it's scary, just just on this point. Just, it's it's not Mickey's fault that we don't have the competition. You're right, Scott, but it's he Mickey's fundamentally fault, has to take responsibility yeah. for his actions once he steps onto the pitch. If his performances aren't up to the grade, and they simply aren't right now, Scott, no, they're not. There's no other way of of putting it. And like I say, I'm a Mikel Antonio fan. I'm not saying it as someone with an axe to grind against Mikel Antonio. Um, but I have to call it as I see it, his levels right now and for the last few games haven't been up to the standard that is required. And from a guy that by his own admission, I believe after the game against Leicester, correct me if I'm wrong, he did state that he has an ambition to win this season's golden boot, correct? Yeah, 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 it was, yeah. Well, this is not the performance levels of someone that is shooting for that particular accolade. It just isn't. These are the performances of Harry Kane in the early parts of the, uh, the European Championships. This is this is the performance of Harry Kane against West Ham at the start. You know when we beat him at the London Stadium. Mm. Um, you know we've we've now got nine games. Yeah, nine games where we either find. A solution. Yep. Well, there's seven See left that. this month. As I say, two of them we've already played. All oh, right. Okay. So we've got seven left then. So you've got seven games in all competitions now. Well, yeah, I would have had eight, eight games in eight games in January. So we've played one. Seven. Hang on. Is that right? Well, we've got no. Eight sorry. More one, two, three, four. We played one. Five. Out six, of nine. Seven, eight. Yeah, we played one out of nine. So there's eight games left eight games in the month left. of December in all competitions. So there's eight games left where we need to find a solution for what is the problem. One of those doesn't matter because it's the dead rubber Europa League. Okay, so regardless of who you want to do, yeah? Regardless of how you want to go about it. The other one, if you can't get yourself up for a cup quarterfinal against Spurs, pack your bags, empty your locker, and get gone, regardless of who you are, if you cannot get yourself up for a London derby in the quarterfinal of a cup, piss off. Quite simple. So that okay. then leaves you six league games, okay? We now need to find another uh, a solution for the six league games that are left. Whether that is Sonny Perkins, whether that is Arco Flex, whether that is as um, Kent put a couple of comments Tom back, Big, Big Tom, um, yeah. whether that's um, Ben Rama playing a false nine and Lanzini coming in to play in the hole, whether that's we change formation, we change tactics and we put Bowen up front with Antonio you know, depend on how you want to play, we have to come up with a solution. There needs to mm. be a solution to the conundrum that is currently Macau Antonio because it's not working. And mm. if we don't find that solution, as Kent's just put, this next month is win or bust. Mm. And if we end up with a situation now where in the next six league games, we only pick up one win, forget top four, you probably even forget top six at that point because mm. we would have sabotaged ourselves. So, yeah. 
this month is win or bust now. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. That's absolutely fair. On the goal that Brighton got, it's a fantastic improvisation from Mope. It was a great cross in by Tariq Lamptey. Got to, got to take my head off, my hat off, not my head. Take my hat off to both of them or for, for their their part in a goal that if I wasn't, if I had no vested interest in, in the match, I could have just sat back and gone, oh, great goal. Well done. Enjoy it. Yes. But it was against my team, so I can't do that. Um, was there any blame, responsibility that you can apportion to anyone? Or you do you think that was just... Go on. Well, I mentioned one. You mentioned the other one. Dawson. Yep. There was no desire to try and get in front of Malpay for that ball into the box. Yeah. He, 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 he certainly wasn't attacking the ball like you'd expect to see your centre-backs doing when the ball comes into the box. Mm -hmm. And Masuaku. Didn't he? Didn't trouble him at all, did he? Didn't even bother trying. You know, um, you know, I see, I see what you're saying there, Ken. But he, he didn't even show a desire to want to try and get to the ball or try and get in front of the striker before the ball even comes off of the foot. Of surely, but he's, he's surely Dawson a, should use his physical attributes against Molpai, shouldn't he? All day long, both him and Zuma should have done. And unfortunately, I, I felt that both of them were. Bullied a little bit last night, Rob, to be honest with you. In fact, I, mm. I think a lot of our side were bullied at points last night. Um, yeah. I, I just hope that, I, I can't remember who it was, back at the start of the chat, turned around and said, maybe we we got our eye, pardon me, we got our eye on Chelsea on Saturday. Uh, and, uh, I think, was that Pete? I'm not sure. Possibly. I'll, I'll, that we're I'll looking go back. In, that we're looking to put in a big performance on Saturday. Regardless of what happened yesterday, there needs to be a big performance. There needs mm. to be the early kickoff. It's on TV. It needs to be a. It needs to be a big performance. Regardless, I don't even know what side it's on. What side's it on? Do we know? Uh, I'm not sure. In, in answer to your question, it was Peter Peter Jones. It was um, Pete, yeah. Asked about sort of like maybe a chance to beat Chelsea. Um, yeah, I mean, look. Um, if you had to give a man of the match, who 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 would who would it have gone I, to I, in a Claret Rouge shirt? I, I, I gave it to Declan Rice. Yeah. I did give it to Declan Rice. As I say, I don't think he had the best game that he's ever had in a West Ham shirt. And mm. that's no disrespect to um that's no disrespect for um for Declan Rice to say I think he had by his own standards, I want to clear that up. Hmm. Uh, not very much. Uh, it was, certainly wasn't an impactful game. I think he's, he's, you know, his stats and everything else will probably state that he was probably, you know, the best West Ham player on the pitch regard um, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things last night. But he his was passing accuracy wasn't all that impressive, actually, when I look at it. It, it was not, okay, but 77.5%. I can't imagine any of them were. I can't imagine um, any of them were, Rob. So if we're going to well, do the, the, the standout is Manuel Lanzini. Well, percentage-wise, yeah, of course it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, followed, believe it or not, by Arthur Masawaku. Yeah. <laughs> really? But everybody else is like now. 70s and 60s, and as I say, Benny's was 54.2. I mean, but there's your problem, <laughs> Duke. There's your problem. I'm not being funny. If your pass accuracy and, and the pass accuracy stats for the for the match yesterday, we was at 72 percent. Now, if you're giving okay. if your pass accuracy is that poor, it's no wonder you had 33, 34 percent possession. It's because you were giving the fucking ball away every five minutes. But we sat too deep as well, Rob, and we allowed them to get at us. Mm. And, and for me, massive, massive problem. You know, there you go. Declan was trying to drive forward, but you've got to have the players to hit. And the uh, problem is, yeah. Ken, as, as I said earlier, on one of the graphics that came up um, from Amazon, was that there were nine players in a row on the on the halfway line. Yeah, Literally, we know, Rob. They were, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a very dubious goal, Rob. I've got it on me. Is it? I've got it on my phone. Uh, I think it was a, a corner. They're all jockeying around. Um, David De Gea goes down 
looked yeah. in a hell of a lot of pain. Okay. A lot of pain on the floor. Ball yeah. comes out to the edge of the box. I think it was Smith Rowe just stuck it in the back of the net whilst the hail was laying on the floor in agony. Really? The referee looked yeah, as the ball came out to the edge of the box, as Smith Rowe hit it, it yeah. looked like uh, Atkins, I think it's mine, Atkinson, uh, okay. was going to blow his whistle. Didn't. The ball was got in. He then blows his whistle. Or as it's about to cross the line, blows his whistle. Um, Man U players are up in arms. Rush to David De Gea. Um, he then got all Was the it a head off. injury? No, no, no. It, was a, it looked like it was his foot. Possibly either had his ankle or his foot stopped, trod on or he rolled his okay. ankle as he trod on someone else's foot. Went down like a sack of shit, as I say. Um, Atkinson then waited for his treatment to be concluded yeah. until he stood up and walked around the box a little bit before he allowed to go. Weird. So They yeah, must have been funny. VARing it whilst De Gea was being attended. Possibly. To, listen, looking at it, if he's trodden on an Arsenal player's foot and rolled his ankle, it's his own fault. Oh, There's... no. Scott! That's all right. That's all right. It don't matter. We're, she we're still going to be... She hasn't jumped up and down yet because obviously on Amazon Prime it's sometimes a little bit... I, I think, think we're this, still going to be... Think... I think I might Three hear a shout in, in a minute. Yes! See, told you. Shout out. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I still think that puts three or four in front. Now, I've, I made a, I made a comment on, I think it might have been Twitter. It might have been on um, someone else's chat yesterday. Mm. That we, uh, Origi, Origi Lingard in the centre back. I, that, that, as I said on the preview video or the game after um, City, yep. Ariki Lingard and um, a centre-back in January, and mm. I will be very, very pleased. Give me a centre-back name. Uh, I think you mentioned Stark was one that we were involved in conversations with. You've, you've obviously, you're quite an expert on, on Bundesliga, Duke. What, what, do you think that would be a good signing for us, stylistically? Left-footed, mate. Ah. Other, left take that to one side. Is he, is he a, a fundamentally he's a, a listen, he's defender? A, again, he's not an Obbonner. He's not an Obbonner, but is he better than Dawson? Yes. Is he better than Diop currently? Yes. So it's not, a, I mean, listen, I, I, I set out my store and I'd have to go back through my book, wherever it's gone, um, with all the names that I had written down. But there was there was definitely a couple of other German centre-backs that are out of contract in the summer um, mm -hmm. who I'd be looking at, although they are right-footers. Um, yeah. Again, if we can ideally bring in two, you'd look to bring in a left, left footer and a right-footer because the right-footers mm -hmm. are still an improvement on both Diop and Dawson. So, I mean, but listen, um, the, there's talk, I think there was a, a lot more noise around um, had Adam Plosek this morning. Um, I've heard Gabriel Barbosa's name mentioned as well. Listen, Gabby Gull. Gabby Gull, yeah. I would, I would say Gabby Gull, but again, if you're looking for someone that plays in a similar way to Antonio, because you're not going to change your tactics, Ariki's your man, I feel. Pacey, mm -hmm. strong, won't be bullied. Premier League experience, European experience. Mate, he'd be the one I'd look at. Yeah. What are you going to get him? He's out of contract in, January, in, in the summer, so yeah. maybe 10 million. Yeah. You could probably you could probably bring out bring in all three players for about 35 million pounds in January. 10 million mm -hmm. on Lingard, 10 million on, on um Origi, 15 million on Dark. Uh, you, you, uh, and then if you want to look at that, that's 35. We're saying we possibly could spend 50. So let's spend 55. Let's spend the other 20 million on, on Adam Fossett. Get him in because he's only 18 and he'd be a great addition to the squad. So, um, listen, we, we did do something because the last the last three games, um, you know, Antonio's kind of wandered around with his foot up his ass. So, um, oh! 
Him I would take. Do you know, I was thinking about him. I saw him on the bench the other day for City and I thought, do you know, he barely gets a look so in you and you think about... I have um, a feeling there's a lot the of money ball. involved there, isn't there? Yeah, probably, but... Yes, Ken, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know you, you're... I, I still haven't had a chance to watch this kid play, but um, I think you've seen him, haven't you, Duke? So, had a bio. I've seen the stuff. Look, obviously, Ken's mentioned him a few times off. I've had a little nose and don't shoot the messenger, but I've had a little look on, on YouTube and um, the, the, the clips I've seen do make him look very, very good. Kieran, so you, what you're saying there, Kieran, is you think they're going to let him go for nothing? They're going to let him go for nothing, yeah. Either that or they're very confident they can get him to sign a contract extension. Yeah. I don't know why they would or why he would, unless it's for money. Mm, maybe. But for, uh, is that, is that Ake you're on about there, Scott, I'm guessing? I mean, yeah, possibly. But again, is he going to want to go play in the championship next season? Because what you got to think of, they might be well. Listen, they could be well adrift, yeah. Gates, by the time, by the time goes... we get to January, they could be, yeah. they could be off the, they could be well off the pace. So we well, could, he I could mean, conceivably go from a team that's Premier League champions to a team that gets relegated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or it can come to us because I, 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 oh, I look, and I'm look. Not thinking that. Look who's just piped up. Oh, does he ever stop this fella? Jesus no, Christ. No. No. It's Remember, funny how he has don't forget to put the 50 um, quid in, in Isla's tin, say. matey. 50 quid in Isla's tin. Anything else, does he? Yeah, um, make sure you do it and send us. I want it. We're doing our pre-match for the Chelsea game. Eight o'clock tomorrow, Duke? Might have to be earlier because you've got Friday night pint on... Um... Seven o'clock. Yeah, you go seven. Okay, right. I'm right. Yeah. Iron Man, you need to put fifty quid in Isla's tin. Uh, you'll you'll have the just giving link in the description below I mean, YouTube like and it. Facebook. No, I think we can put. Um, well, no, don't give me don't give me that load of old crap. Um, we're not having that. As I say, you promised you'd get us shirts. You promised you'd clean our house. You promised you'd clean our cars. So I think a fifty quid well, donation is more point. than fair. I you think did that's money more where your than mouth fair. So. Um, you were the one that opened your mouth, matey. So now you can you can make good on your promise. Um, simple you as that. You have to reap what you, you know. sow. When you're one all. Oh! There you go. There you go. So? Can't be bad. It wasn't, it wasn't a penalty, though, Scott. It was actually a very good finish. <laughs> very good finish. Opens up his body. Really good goal, actually. Yeah. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Do you want some nuggets? Give me some nuggets. I've only got three for you today. Um, bit of a right. bit of a sort of like bit of a mixed bag, but here we go. I'll I'll try and cheer you guys up. Um, we failed to win any of our last That's nine Premier start. League games against. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on, it does get better. Um, hang on a minute. I've just got to turn the camera off just real quick. Um, because my daughter wants to go away from the shower, or come out of the shower. And she is obviously doesn't want you lot looking at her, and I don't want you lot looking at her. So I was going to say that seems more like a reasonable, reasonable comment, mate. There you <laughs> you go. Right. Don't want to look yeah, I'm I'm starting at the bottom, but I'm working my way up. I'm going to turn all it right. around, guys. Okay, so right. that's 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 the bad one out of the way. All right, there you go. Um, now, Brighton have now failed to win any of their last nine games in the Premier League, drawing seven, losing two. It's the third time they have been on a winless run. Of that length under Graham Potter in the Premier League. So I think that probably says that <laughs> Graham Potter, I don't, I don't think he's probably in any danger of getting the bullet. Would you say? Well, there was there's, there's talk today, mate, that he's the one that's uh, a name that's been mentioned um, to replace Rangnick at United, believe it or not. Do you know, that's a really weird situation they've got there because they've got an interim interim manager in Michael Carrick and he's going to be replaced by an interim manager in Ralph Rangnick. And he is going to then become a, a, a consultant, I believe, when whoever comes in in January, uh, in the summer. Who's it? Unless, Rangnick of course, or yeah. Carrick? <laughs> well, it, it may well be that they go for Carrick again in the summer. I don't know. Um, I mean, I've heard that Dan mentioned. I've that. heard... The thing is, the thing that I don't get, Duke, and, and forgive me, but I know we're talking Manchester United, not West Ham here, but it just seems really odd that you'll get 
a guy in for six months to do a job, to put things in place. And it could well be that the guy that comes in to replace you wants to play a completely different style of football. I just don't see it makes any sense whatsoever. Unless the guy that you're going to replace Rangnick for is uh, a Rangnick clone, like a Thomas Tuchel or um, a Jurgen Klopp. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you ain't going to replace him with Tuchel or Klopp, are you? So, no. Yeah. And, then, and then what you're doing is you're going to give Rangnick £100 million pound in January, allegedly. Yeah. And if they're going to do that... Mental. What's, what's to say that the guys that are going to come in are going to be fitted in the new guy's setup? It, it doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Crazy. Do you want the last nugget? But this is this one will make you smile, I promise. This has to be a good one. Yeah, here we go. We have now equaled our best ever start to a Premier League season after 14 games with 24 points, also 24 points in 2014-2015. There we go. Pulled it around. So you, despite the disappointment, the front, like despite the disappointment, and I and I feel it, trust me, I feel it, but we've equaled our best ever start to a Premier League season after 14 games. So let's let's try and be a little bit glass half full, yeah? What listen, do you reckon? That was the, so I, I, I'm at a point, listen, I've got this out of the way now. We've been going an hour. I now, bright and sun and dusted for me now. That's it, it's over. I now move into my mood for tomorrow. Okay. Um, Arsenal have dropped back to lower again. Yeah, this no, no, was before. Because they're now they're, they're, they're still on they're now on twenty four points, but we have yep. a better goal difference. Yeah. So, listen. You you if you give most West Ham if you give if you'd give most West Ham fans still in Europe, still in the League Cup, fourth place as as we speak in the Premier League after fourteen games. Looking at the bigger picture now, we've done the match and. We're all pissed off and disappointed and yada, 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 right? Now, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture now, Duke. You'd have taken this all day long, wouldn't you? Mate, if we're still in, if we're still in touch and distance to top six, or even top four, top six, once we hit January, I think it's a banging first half of the season, mate, mm. to be honest with you. Even if we get knocked out by Spurs in the cup. If, oh, don't say that. Um, no, no, no. If we get knocked out by Spurs, we're still reach a quarter final of the League Cup. We're still in touching distance of, say, top four, top six. And we're through to the knockout stages of the Europa League regardless. But it's a banging start to the season. Banging Do you have any idea up. how my life will be if we get knocked out by that lot? Oh, listen, that's your own fault for marrying one. And when I say marrying one, I mean a Spurs fan, not a hippo. Hmm. Really is true, and they. And what I was told once upon a time: if you're looking for sh- sympathy, look in the dictionary. You'll find it halfway between shit and syphilis. <laughs> that was my old service manager at Electrolux that told me that, <laughs> and I'm still in touch with him to this day. I mean, that that goes back. Oh bloody hell! Um, twenty four years, nearly twenty five years. Yeah, I was told that piece of advice. Yeah, if you're after sympathy, look in the dictionary. It's roughly halfway between shit and syphilis. And you know what? That's right. It's absolutely true. I mean, I don't really wish to confirm or deny that, so I'm going to leave that with you. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, he's going to Spurs for the quarterfinal. Listen, yeah. listen, it's, I mean, listen, things have not gone to plan for the Spuds so far with Conte being in charge, have they? It hasn't no. gone... You know, to the point that some of the Spurs fans yesterday um, that were obviously watching the West Ham game for whatever reason, there's no disrespect, Spurs are playing tonight and I'm watching Man U Arsenal. I'm watching Spurs, so I don't know why the Spurs were watching us versus Brighton last night, to be honest with you, but they were. Now, that being said, there were comments being made that they, some of them wished that they'd got Potter ahead of Conte. What, Harry Potter? Well, I think that's what they're going to need. <laughs> I think they're going to need yeah. some sort of fucking wizard, isn't they? So, but you know, listen. At the end of the day, mate, it's a, it's been a special season so far, and mm-hmm. you know, two draw, two defeats and a draw aren't going to change the fact that so far it's been a special season. 
Um, what does bug me is obviously there are certain certain fans, and there's there's one of them in our chat and has been for the last couple of streams that we've done. You know, old negative Nelly. Um, that who could you mean? I have no idea. But that being said, we're still fourth. Hopefully, by the end of tonight, we're still there. Regardless of what the other teams do around us, uh, we're still fourth. We're still in Europe. We've still got a cup final. We've got a quarter final to play. Um, okay, we're still massive. Just a little bit less than we were yesterday morning. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And please don't forget to like, comment on, and share the stream. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. And as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your always. support. As Wonderful always, people. we we love you all dearly. Um, Most do, of you. I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna end it there, aren't we, my friend? We are. We are. Want yeah. a little discussion with you offline before we go? Absolutely, um, of course. And that's fine. But that's just um, something to take this wonderful channel to the next level, I feel. Ooh. I want to go one step further. Aye, aye. In he's, a good he's, way. He's, he's been thinking, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a couple of quid in the coffers at the minute. I want to try and have a little look at um, oh. something a little bit special, Mr. Robert. Easy, easy. You're, you're getting me all, all curious now. And as Ken just said, enjoying the ride. Ken... To quote right. the comedian on one of his stand-up shows, I'm going to ride this mother until the wheels fall off. <laughs> Bless and you, Pete. Thanks, off, mate. I'll get back on again for next season. Pete, thank you. Rob, yeah. much appreciated. Good stream again, buddy. Um, and just to quote a friend of the channel who started it initially, Mr. Andrew Miles of West Ham Reunited, we are fucking massive. Amen to that. Come on, you irons. Good night.